sources, Rose Day Hill is up in the balcony. Uh, Parish Life, Kim Bernard, who might be in the kitchen. Uh, Outreach, Liz Halbert. And Pastoral Care, Deacon Pam. You, each of you, provide us leadership and you make sure that all of our ministries, the 50 some odd ministries that we have, are communicating and planning and coordinating and the gift of time and talent that you bring to St. Philip's is truly, truly appreciated. Thank you. And now, moving towards the Rector's Cross Awards. Lorraine, you're ready for this? This nomination came from several people, and so I've basically cut and pasted this just like I have the next nomination. So you may hear the pronouns I and such, and it's not me personally, it's the people who wrote it. Her usual response when asked if she can assist is, I'll do whatever. This response is filled with humility and a giving heart and is the basis for this nomination for the Rector's Cross. Her contribution to and her roles at St. Philip's have grown consistently over the years that she's been here. Her giving spirit flows, overflows rather, at every turn, and it is almost difficult to put into words. The amazing care for and love of others that she offers is joyful, and evident by her wonderful and welcoming smile, her kind words, and her listening ear. She shares her expertise willingly, whether it's, and and often, whether it's arranging flowers for the altar, she also fills in for altar guild when it's needed. She pays special attention to detail with everything she does, even in breaking down the altar flowers to individual vases vases for ministry to the homebound. Everything has to be just right. Her ministry with respect to worship service is exemplified by her participation in many aspects of worship. She's a talented lay reader, a gracious Eucharistic minister, a dedicated acolyte, and most recently, a reverent crucifer. Away from worship services, she is a spirited Eucharistic visitor, and for a period of time, she even served as the chair of our stewardship ministry. She is an evangelist in words and deeds. She encourages people to share God's love with her welcoming spirit. She shares her love of God and her faith without any hesitation. Her focus, her focus rather, on living into God's love and word is evident in all aspects of her life. One of the most special things about her is her overall generous giving spirit. She is quick to smile and give words of encouragement. The joy of God, the love of God, and the grace of God just spills out of her. Aiden, it is my pleasure to award you the Rector's Cross. One more. This one is a little more verbose. There were a number of of nominations for this person, and again, I tried to cut and paste as best I could. He served more than one, more than two terms on vestry, during which time he was also elected junior warden and senior warden. And in 2018, he served on the rector's search committee, where he and the entire search team recruited and called the most dynamic and gifted priest in the entire church. (laughs) 
I added that line. <laughs> to say this person has gone above and beyond is an understatement. He's captain of our groundskeeping team, ensuring our campus is always picturesque condition each and every month. He's volunteered with a men's group to offer hot dogs on the 4th of July and back in the day, the lobster sales. He's volunteered to be a tutor at Virginia Williamson Elementary School. Every year he helps with special cleaning days throughout the campus when, need, when, when we need a little sprucing up. As a member of Odd Jobbers, he's worked at New Vision Hope Clinic, or New Hope, is it New Vision or New Hope? New Hope Clinic, and as well as at several parishioners' homes for minor projects. Having served as part of the team that brings Eucharist to Terabella, assisted living on a weekly basis, he has blessed those who are unable to attend worship here in church. He volunteers as a counter for the weekly contributions and served as the point of contact when a movie company wanted to film in the Chapel of the Cross. And he assists his wife on the altar guild at times. He helped create and has also served as part of the Safety and Security Committee he was a key member of the Vestry Executive Committee that helped to rewrite and pass the new bylaws that transitioned us into a program church. When the National Church through the diocese levied a mandatory program called Safe Church Upon All Churches, he made sure it was safe for the participants as well as those who are served here at St. Philip's. He's made St. Philip's one of the leading parishes in the diocese concerning this program. And each year, he gathers his faithful elves, and he assembles and decorates the chrismon tree, which graces our sanctuary. Although many of his roles are behind the scenes, I believe, again, this is the person who wrote this, I believe the role he serves as an usher is incredible. When he is head usher on Sunday, an index card appears with all the ushers listed and their assignments for the service. As head usher for funerals, he makes sure that family and friends can celebrate the life of a loved one during a smooth and well-orchestrated service. He pays special attention to the families to make sure their day is as easy as possible. During our Memorial Day service in the Memorial Garden, he shows reverence and due respect to our veterans with his participation and crisp salute. He always has a smile on his face, a lilt in his step, and you know that he's willing, both a willing and a joyful follower of Jesus, who is ready to serve in any way needed. And if you ever need a spreadsheet, Dana is your man. I don't believe there's a better example of a servant leader than Dana Richardson, and we are grateful for his service and commitment to our church. Dana, it is with great pleasure I award you the 2024 Rector's Cross. Those are so fun to do. Okay, we need to elect some folks. So before I invite a report from the nominations committee, I want to remind the parish of our bylaws for elections. A nominating committee comprised of those members of vestry who are retiring shall form the committee and they will begin no later than 60 days prior to our annual meeting to begin to recruit and receive and seek nominations for both vestry and diocesan delegate. No later than 30 days, those people must be identified to allow the proper vetting, as well as gathering information to get to you in the form of the pamphlet that you had received either digitally or hard copy in the narthex to tell you what these candidates were about, especially for vestry. I don't know if we did that for, for the uh, diocesan delegate. And during this time, from when the committee first makes it well known to the 30 days prior, 
Members of the parish are invited and encouraged to nominate themselves or others. And this time is considered nominations from the floor. The bylaws do not allow nominations at our annual meeting for the obvious reasons of vetting and gaining permission and making sure that everything is in proper order. It also says that in the event that the number of nominees is equal to the number of open seats, the parish may elect by acclamation, meaning we don't have to fill out ballot sheets. And now I would like to invite a report from the nominations committee for the election of convention delegates. You can speak, oh, come on up here. You have to turn that on. There you go. Okay. The nominations committee was tasked to receive no less than four nominees to meet our parish need. I am pleased to advise the members of St. Philip's that four individuals have been nominated to serve as delegates and two as alternate, alternate delegates to the diocesan convention taking place in November of 2025. As I read your names, please stand and remain standing. Janet Zricki, Maitland Barnes, Rick Pierce, Fallon Pierce, and alternates Frank and Marianne Darzano. We have found that each of the delegates have met the requirements as stipulated by St. Philip's bylaws and therefore recommend voice vote. The recommendation has been made for election by acclamation. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, and thank you to each of you who are willing to serve. Again, you are likely going to be electing our next bishop. So, thank you. And vestry members. The nominations committee is pleased to advise the members of St. Philip's that four individuals have been nominated to serve as vestry members. As I read your names, please stand and remain standing. Ellen Burnett, Donna Foster, John Kennedy, Paul Palmer. The committee has found that each of the nominees have met the requirements as stipulated in St. Philip's bylaws and therefore recommend voice vote. The recommendation has been made for election by acclamation. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Congratulations to each of you. You may be seated. And if you were just elected, please know that immediately following this annual meeting, we're going, to we're going to get together right over where Ray is, in the choir loft, and we need to conduct about five minutes worth of business. So that's for returning vestry as well as newly elected. Bob, our treasurer, would you like to present the budget to the parish? And you can stand there or here. Where do you want to be? Might be better. The uh, information about the meeting had put in, uh, included uh, the results of the operating budget through October as well as the uh, budget for the next year. Um, both of those I have more recent information on, so if you notice, it won't be exactly the same. Uh, for 2024, we actually are having a, a fairly good year. Um, our revenues right now are expected to uh, exceed budget by about $25,000. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, part of that is because after we approved the budget, we got a good number of uh, additional pledges come in. So uh, that, that was one thing. And also, folks who uh, have joined the church and have not been pledging um, gave more than we had put in the budget as well. So th those are both good things. Uh, our expenses right now are expected to be $23,000 under budget. A um, couple of reasons for that are one is that uh, uh, when the assistant priest left, um, we did hire Pam in her position as the uh, uh, director of pastoral care. 
um, but there was additional money that was in there for the assistant priest, uh, so that was less than what we had put in the budget. Uh, and uh, that, that really is the, is the main thing. One thing I would like to point out is when people look at the budget, sometimes they say for the outreach, why is the number small? Because this year we had $4,000 in there and we're gonna have the same amount next year. And the, th the thing that I tell everybody is that the, out the amount that they get from the bu operating budget is, is relatively small. They, we have a, an outreach endowment, which they have to spend the dividends and interest every year from the prior year. Um, we have the ECW and the Men on a Mission give their uh, fundraising monies to the uh, outreach as well. And then there's also donations that people receive directly from you. Um, as a result, what's not shown here is that the outreach group has given over $43,000 uh, to various uh, charities this year. The other thing that was not in here was when we originally did the budget, um, we were concerned that we were not going to be able to have enough money to cover the expenses that we had in the budget, and we had removed the contributions to the maintenance reserve and also to the insurance deductible, which was $12,000 and $10,000 respectively. Um, because we are running a, gonna run a surplus this year, we will be able to make those contributions that we had taken out of the uh, budget earlier. Having said that, let's move on to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That, that was the good news about the operating budget. We, we also have some temporary restricted funds, one of them being the maintenance reserve. And we're in the process right now of replacing six of our HVAC units as well as doing some repairs on the outside of the church here. And these activities are pretty much going to drain our entire little over $100,000 maintenance reserve. So uh, um, that, that was the unfortunate news this year. And then in addition, as Father Eric had mentioned in his uh, sermon, uh, we also had the lightning strike and $5,000 of our insurance deductible had to be used for that. So th those were, we, we don't put budgets together, but it is money that's coming out of the reserves that we have. This year's proposed budget for 2025 um, had a, a lot of increased uh, re requests for money. Um, a major thing that was going on here was the, uh, the um, vestry strategy work, and uh, that, that was something that uh, it really increased it. But there was other things that were increasing our, our money, our uh, budget as well this year. Um, our medical expenses were increased by over $35,000 this year. That's quite a bit. The uh, uh, property and workers' comp uh, um, insurance went up also by over $7,000. So there's a bunch of things that you know, contributed to a, a much higher uh, increase. Um, when the original request for budgeted money came out, um, I, don't know, I should put on my glasses so I can see what I'm talking about here. It was over a million dollars. And right, we were all, we, what we did was we approved $937,000. So we couldn't, we didn't think that we'd be able to raise enough money to uh, cover the full million dollars plus that was requested. Um, having said that, we still have had issues trying to balance this budget. And there were a couple of things that we wound up taking out. Again, we took out the maintenance reserve and we took out the insurance deductible. Um, there was also some strategy work that was delayed so it didn't hit in the beginning of the, uh, of the year um, in order to bring our expenses down. Um, having done that, um, we still have a $8,000 deficit. And we don't like to have deficit budgets. However, um, the feeling is, is that the good work that the, that the uh, vestry is doing on their strategy work is important. And it's important for us to get these things up and running and that eventually, um, hopefully as new people join the church, they will bring in more money. Um, so, and the other thing was that because we are running a surplus in 2024, um, the Finance and Facilities Board recommended to the vestry and they approved using $8,000 of the surplus from this year in order to cover the current budget deficit for next year. So um, we are going to do that. The other thing I'd like to mention is that right now we had a, an amount in the budget for our pledges for next year. And the pledge campaign this year um, has not been going as well as we would have hoped. Um, we are, this year we have 173 people that had signed up. As Father Me Eric mentioned, we had 190 last year. We do have more money because some you know, people have been generous 
but we are still uh, $48,000 short of where we uh, need to be in order to balance the budget. So I, my request is if you haven't pledged yet, please consider doing so, so we can get back. There's you know, a bunch of people that have pledged this year and haven't for next, and uh, you know, we, we need to do that. If we, if we can't uh, you know, get that money in, then we'll have to take a look at uh, what we'll be able to do during the year. Thank you. There'll be a time for questions at the very end. Uh, wardens, we'll start with Junior Warden. Al, do you have anything you want to share beyond what you've already put in the annual report? As uh, Father Eric pointed out earlier, a lot goes on behind the scenes, and, and as I spent the year on Vestry and as a junior warden, I very much came to appreciate how much work goes into uh, everything that happens here, both on Sundays and, and throughout the week. So I just want to recognize everybody, both the clergy staff and all the wonderful volunteers that have uh, made that happen. It's, it's really incredible. Uh, I won't try to repeat the litany of interesting events that occurred during the year, uh, but during that, uh, we've had tremendous leadership from our senior warden, and I, I seriously want to recognize Susan for all the efforts uh, she's put in behind the scenes to keep uh, everything going. Great job. Susan, our senior warden. Sure. Good morning, St. Phillips. <clears throat> I did write the report, and hopefully you've had a chance to read it, but um, December is oftentimes a month of, for reflection, quiet reflection, and it certainly has been for me, not only uh, as Advent approaches, we're in Advent and Christmas approaches, but as I look back on the year and all that transpired, um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have provided the leadership uh, for the church, especially during the time Father Eric was away. Um, yes, he, he promised me he would come back in one piece, and yes, I promised him I wouldn't burn the church down. So both of us had some splaining to do when he got back. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't want to repeat all that, because everyone has already spoken to the wonderful things that go on here. One thing that really hit home when Father Eric was talking this morning was that there's no way you could ever know what a senior warden does, unless you've been a senior warden, and many of you are sitting out here in the congregation right now, you know uh, what I'm talking about. But it was an eye-opening and humbling experience, and thank you, Ken and Jim, for even though he got a little sick in the beginning, I don't know if he really wanted to come or not, but we got him going, <laughs> come on, come on. And um, he helped uh, shepherd us through the, t through the time, and we got Father Eric back, uh, more or less in one piece, and um, it, it's just been an interesting, interesting time. And t just uh, everybody does such a wonderful job here. The staff is incredible. You wouldn't know this unless you had an inside look, as I've had uh, the past few months. And um, our clergy and Deacon Pam, thank you for stepping up and filling the void um, that was created when Mother Lisa left. Um, to the vestry members, what a great group. <laughs> Uh, especially thanks to the outgoing class, Michelle Barkalo, Jeff Gerson, and Margaret Bearden. Um, I think that's all I really want to say. You can read the report, and uh, thank you to the parish for all of your support as well. So as Susan just said, I trust that you've had the opportunity to already read the annual report, and it's filled with just a lot of really good news. So many things are happening, so many people are involved, so many people in the community are touched by what takes place by the members of this parish. In my sermon, I repeatedly drew your attention to the scripture, 
prepare the way of the Lord. Now I want to invite a member from each of our strategies to come forward and share with us their progress on the work of preparing the way of the Lord. But just briefly to remind you that this, this process began well over a year ago. It began and they did an environmental scan, which means they reached out to all sorts of church or churches over across the entire nation here in the diocese, across the diocese, across the nation, to find out what was working well in churches of the size that we are now and what we are becoming. They also gathered what was going on around us. They did a strength, a SWAT thing, which is strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, and decided to, or didn't decide, they, they gathered all that information, and then they determined, based upon that and the environmental scan, they worked together, when they came up, they ended up, I think, with 18 different possible strategies and reduced that by combining one or two and, and discarding some others, and they moved it down to three. And those are the three that we have been working on for the past year. Now, I said all that in about 45 seconds or so, and it took about, I don't know, 18 months to do that. It's not quick work. It's a lot of painstaking research and gathering of data and sharing the data and digesting it and coming up with where we're at. And so at this point in time, I do want to call upon our strategies to come, briefly remind you what the strategy is, and then tell you not only where we are, but where we hope to be this coming year. So strategy one, if you would come tell us what your strategy is, and then <clears throat> fill us in. Good morning. Good morning. If I salivate while I'm up here, it's just because they open the door every once in a while. Uh, strategy one is the wellness strategy. We're talking about body, soul, and spirit. Our activities have really been focused on body, on wellness. And at the beginning of the year, we did a lot of research, um, particularly Susan, calling out. I went to local churches to see what they do, and even some churches that aren't Episcopal in this town, and learned that we're kind of doing the in thing, that they're just beyond where we are at this point, but this appears to be something a lot of churches are focusing on right now. Since we uh, met, though, we have been meeting regularly, probably once or twice a month, with volunteers, and we've got a framework in place. Um, we have a wellness coordinator, that's Michelle Gore. We have Helping Hands, which is Janet Wester. And we have Sarah Pettis, who's Care Navigator. So we have the top and we have two individual areas. And to explain what the two do, um, Helping Hands, that Janice heads up, uh, does, this includes things like a meal train, prayer shawls, support visits, and cards. That's just to name a few. And in, term of, in terms of care navigating, that includes important things like um, these people are medical professionals, so they guide them through medical issues. They're not going to give them any diagnosis. They're not going to treat them. But what they are going to do is, for instance, if they have insurance questions, if they have any questions at all that these people can answer, they're there to help. At this point, we probably have 15 people that have been involved, and maybe slighting some, and I refuse to name the names because I know I'll miss a bunch of them, but we, they met with us over this course of time, and it's been very, very successful to the point that we're pretty ready, almost ready to implement it. Uh, that would be in the responsibility of the new people <laughs> uh, to do that since three of us are leaving. But, um, and the other thing I want to mention too is uh, sometime in January we'll set up a hotline. Uh, it'll be a confidential hotline if people have any medical issues you can call into that line, it will be monitored daily. I'm not gonna say somebody's gonna be waking up at three o'clock in the morning to monitor it, but they'll be able to respond back to you fairly quickly if you have any issues and, and respond accordingly. Our plan is also to start advertising this in Come and See, E! News, and in the weekly bulletin so people are aware of what we're doing. And that's where we are right now. Thank you.
Thank you and good morning again. Uh, Father Eric did a great job of summarizing uh, all, all of the processes that go into this. And with strategy two, which is structure for growth update, uh, we're reaching a point where the strategic planning is, is kind of meeting uh, operational implementation. All right, and so a quick review of the structure for growth. The goal of this strategy is to develop staff, vestry, and finance requirements for our future growth. And in many ways, it's supporting all of the things you've heard about today. There's three specific plans that make up the strategy, and they are to identify staff requirements, number two, to uh, perform a holistic assessment of the vestry, and number three, identify future financial requirements. And these are important to our future, and they're, of course, they're interrelated with one another in many ways. So here's a quick overview of the items that have been done, are currently being done, and are planned to be uh, done in the future. Items completed. Uh, we started off by making growth projections. We have to try to decide what it's gonna look like. Uh, you're never sure about whether you're gonna get that right. We used internal data and external population growth studies to do so, and uh, this year's planning was based on a 10% year-over-year growth. So we, each year, we anticipate at least 10% growth in the key areas of uh, finance and people and average attendance. Uh, we conducted an extensive review of our requirements in these areas, again, using historical records, internal records, and a, a very thorough series of interviews, as well as understanding what other churches that are similar to ours are doing. We provided recommendations to address requirements and to fill critical gaps, which is where the, uh, the implementations come in. And out of that, we re-recommended re an increase in both staff here and outside services to meet these requirements. These additions were reflected in this year's stewardship campaign and have been included in the 2025 budget, as, as Bob alluded to. And uh, the folks uh, heretofore have stepped up understanding these requirements and, and has been reflected in uh, the generous giving. Items currently underway. Uh, as we transition to the new year with the implementation of several new infrastructure capabilities, these include an increase in parish office administrative staff, partnering with an outside accounting and auditing firm, partnering with, uh, excuse me, uh, bringing in a full-time facilities manager, and engaging an outside cleaning service. Items for 2025 and beyond, we will update the growth projections annually to look forward. We'll conduct a comprehensive review of the bylaws and vestry processes that support those bylaws, and that will uh, enable us to be prepared for growth and continue to serve our parish and our community. Uh, we'll continue uh, the analysis of our infrastructure requirements in anticipation of the five-year growth projections. And we are confident that with our vigilance, planning, and the continued support of the parish, uh, we can prepare for a very bright future for St. Philip's. Thanks. Thank you, Al. Dorothy, you're speaking for strategy three. That's better. Good morning. I'm Dorothy Haviland. Um, tis the season for the sniffles, so please bear with me. Um, like many of you, I was drawn here to St. Philip's because of its welcoming spirit and its vibrant community. Today, we, our, our group, are excited to share with you how the Vestry Strategy Team is working to ensure that our welcoming spirit continues to thrive and to grow. To grow our church is the strategy. It's a really fun group. We've identified as our area grows, St. Philip's should grow along with it. Since our last report, we've been hard at work creating a team of St. Philip's ambassadors. Our mission is to extend the same welcoming spirit that brought so many of us here to new parishioners and to the broader community. We've partnered with Parish Life, with Men on a Mission, with Outreach, and with the ECW to invite new members into our church and to encourage current members to deepen their involvement. From personal invitations to Sunday services and coffee hours, to planning lunches and monthly activities, we're enhancing our already vibrant and welcoming atmosphere. 
Looking ahead, we're planning events that showcase St. Philip's as a beacon to Southport. Picture this. Families gathering on our beautiful lawn for games. The community coming together for Christmas caroling. An Easter egg hunt that brings smiles to children and parents alike. We're also preparing for the Southport 4th of July celebration, offering a comfort station so moms can change babies, get a cool drink in a little bit of privacy, um, possibly provide a parade float to showcase St. Philip's to the wider community. And yes, keep an eye out for some new and exciting St. Philip's swag. T-shirts, hoodies, polo shirts, caps, and mugs. Sure, just imagine enjoying a meal at Fishy Fishy or Oliver's or American Fish while proudly wearing your St. Philip's gear, sparking curiosity with our slogan, it's worth the drive. Our church is alive. <laughs> Our ambassador team is a group of energetic and creative individuals. We're passionate about making St. Philip's a cornerstone of faith and fellowship in Southport. But we do need your help. We're looking for more parishioners to join us in welcoming new members and in spreading God's love. Please come and talk to us after this, after this meeting. Craig, Mary Grace, and I would love to share more about how you can be part of this exciting Michigan mission. Together, let's grow our church and our community of faith. We look forward to talking with you. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Dorothy. At this time, I'd like to ask our deacon, Pam, to come forward and share anything that she might would like to share to the parish. It seems to be the time to make the formal announcement. I think most of you are aware that I have passed through the process of meeting with the bishop, well, meeting with Father Eric, meeting with the bishop, meeting with the parish discernment committee, then the vestry recommendation, and then meeting with the commission on ministry who agreed that they would re recommend me uh, to go through the process of becoming a priest. I am most happy to further report that the bishop has accepted that recommendation and I am now officially a postulant for the priesthood in this diocese. <laughs> Steps going forward just because people ask me, so I don't know. Um, I will not have to go to seminary. Uh, a lot of my formation was done as a approaching the diaconate. So the bishop will meet with the school for ministry. They will decide what it is I still need to have in the way of education or under my belt, and we'll move on from there. I am meeting with the bishop early in January, I hope, and uh, I will, I'll certainly let you all know as things progress, but I just wanted to share that with you, and thank you for all of your love and support in this process and ongoing, I know, so thank you. And now it makes a little more sense when I said in my sermon, Pam, you'll make a fine priest. I want to take time just for a few moments and extend my appreciation to those members of our vestry who are retiring this, this at the end of this calendar year. And if you would just stand again, Margaret, Michelle, and Jeff, oh look, they're all right there in a row. Thank you so much for what you have done these past three years. You may be seated. And our senior warden, who accomplished masterful work and leadership during my sabbatical, 
and learned more than she ever cared to know about what a rector does, Susan Chase. Susan is retiring senior warden who had the distinct onus of serving while a rector was away on sabbatical and for all the many hours and days and weeks that you provided leadership to the vestry, to the board chairs, to the entire parish, for the hours of sleep you lost, for all the time away from Mike that this made you, made you have to do, if that's the right way to say that, we would like you to please accept this gift as appreciation on our part for your intentional and committed ministry this past year. It's coming from there. And I want to extend my thanks to our treasurer, Bob Fuchs. Bob has served for treasurer for 37 years? What? <laughs> More than 10. 10 years. And after much prayer and consideration for various reasons, Bob has elected to step down from this ministry that he has so faithfully uh, performed these past 10 years. Bob is our retiring treasurer who's dedicated your time and talent for many years, serving the vestry, never tiring of questions, never tiring of asking questions. You've served the vestry and the boards, indeed the entire parish, and I know that you have been perplexed at times, you've lost sleep at times, you've had difficult news and challenges over these years. And we would like to also extend to you a gift of our appreciation for your service. Ricky, thank you, Bob. <laughs> of course, the entire vestry I give my thanks to because they they, they are the leadership you have elected, and they do a very fine job of doing what they're called to do. The staff I'd like to thank, of course, Deacon Pam, and we've talked about her, her attributes and the things that she has done and the, the way she has excelled this year. But our organist and choir master, Debbie Skillman, Debbie, your, your ministry is truly leading us in worship. I lead the liturgy, you lead the worship. Thank you for your ministry. And it's always good to sing the Gloria, no matter when we want to do it. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Carla Platt, who can't be with us, but she has been served. She's been transitioning this year from only being the sextant to being a sextant halftime and being working in the office halftime. And that role is going to continue to change because of vestry uh, initiatives this next year. She's going to become full-time staff and we're quite in depth with, or quite involved with our finances and working with our new treasurer as well. And last, but not least, Lorraine, who is both my memory and my sanity. Where are you, Lorraine? Where is she? Oh, she's right there. <laughs> Most of the time, Lorraine is full of fun and frolics, and sometimes she's a little tense. And that's okay, because I do a lot of things with her that, that complicate her job every day. And thank you, Lorraine, for your work. You all make my life so much easier, truly. And I want to extend my appreciation and thanks to each of you. You are St. Philip's. You are the reason ministry takes place in this church. You are the hands 
and the feet of Christ. I stand in the pulpit and I preach. And hopefully that's to instill in you to go out and be, to be in the community, to be Christ's hands and his feet. And you do a great job. You do a great job. You are the reason we do not lack any spiritual gifts. You are the reason that people come and visit and come back and stay. You are the reason that the love of Jesus is shared throughout this community and this town. And you are the reason that St. Philip's is St. Philip's. When one of you is missing, we are lacking who we are. We are more with each of us gathered. You are the reason we continue to prepare the way of the Lord. Thank you to each and every one of you. A reminder to our vestry, I need to meet with returning vestry members as well as our newly elected vestry members. And Chris, if you could sit in with us as well right up here. Thank you. Is there any other business? Were there questions that people wanted to ask either myself or the vestry, the strategies, the treasurer, Deacon Pam, or do you just want to go eat chicken? <laughs> it looks like chicken is getting the vote. Frazier. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Frazier. I have no other business. There are no questions. There are no discussion items, and so I would entertain a motion to close. That was Jim Belvin. Who seconded? Anybody you want to put down, Lorraine, it was seconded. <laughs> Deacon Pam, if you would come forward and offer a closing prayer, grace, and dismissal. Thank you, Fraser. You beat me to it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, we thank you for this time of counsel and discussion as we gathered for the mission and renewal of your church. As we depart to share a time of fellowship, may the insights shared and decisions made be guided by your wisdom and grace. Bless our steps as we go forth to live out our faith in the world. And now give us grateful hearts for the meal we are about to partake in. May it sustain our lives and make our hearts glad, always being mindful of the needs of others. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.